Fortnite loves just to throw players off. Every other week, it seems like there's a new weapon, item, vehicle, you name it, added to the game. There's crazy new unique weapons such as the boom bow and the flink knock pistol. And even some older ones are being changed. Because of all this, what loadouts are viable in Season 8 is definitely something to think about. Keep in mind, when we talk about viability, it's mainly for the Battle Royale game mode. We'll make sure to point out what works better in Arena versus Pubs. We won't be ranking them in order, but more by playstyle. This way, hopefully you can find a loadout that matches the way you play. So without further ado, my name is Keith Allen Henson, and let's get started. These are Fortnite's best loadouts for getting you wins in Season 8. A quick couple of general tips before we get started. With the start of Season 8, there are two significant changes which allow you to get high tier items quite easily. The first is that the vending machines are always blue or higher in rarity, so landing at vending machine locations can be an easy way to complete a lot of these loadouts in your games. Another is the addition of the treasure map, which guarantees several gold pieces of loot. An item definitely worthy of its name, these are always worth getting so you can complete your in-game loadout. Sometimes, you have to travel a decent distance to unbury it, so if the treasure map is out of your way, try to use a vehicle to get there faster. You'll be back on track soon enough. This loadout has been a staple in the game for a few seasons now, and is still, in our opinion, one of the best and most consistent loadouts for winning games. But there's a few choices you can make preference-wise with this kit. If you have some faith in your aim abilities, you can choose to take an AK as your rifle so you can get those three shot eliminations. But once you find a scar, we would recommend dropping the AK for it. While the AK has some higher damage, it's outshined by the higher damage per second the scar has, which is especially useful for structures. The bloom on the AK is very poor as well, making full spraying a player a bit difficult. Another choice, if you hate bloom and would rather have your bullets go where you aim, is the scoped AR. Not a bad choice for an early game rifle. It did get buffed and damaged recently and might be a decent choice to run up until you find a scar. As for which scar to choose, they both do the same damage to structures but have different output to players. The regular scar does a significant amount more, but it's hard to quantify the effectiveness of a silencer which can help you land a couple more bullets before your opponent notices where he's being shot from. The regular scar is meant for spraying, while the silent scar is more meant for first shot accuracy tapping. Either way, which one you end up using comes down to personal preference. But if you're having doubts, the regular scar is likely the way to go. For the shotgun, you gotta always run a pump. The pump is just so much more powerful than the attack shotgun is, especially since they buffed the pump to one shot capabilities for its blue and greater rarity. The attack shotgun just doesn't do enough damage until you get really close range, where a pump can kill you even at full health. Almost everything is better about the pump shotgun, so we recommend always taking it. For your SMG slot, you can choose between a Blue Silence SMG or a P90. Some players prefer using the Blue Silence SMG as a spread is better than the P90. It's also silence, which can help you land a few more bullets before your opponent notices where he's being shot from, possibly netting you a kill you wouldn't even have gotten otherwise. The P90 does have 10 extra ammo in each magazine and has a higher DPS, which makes it better for spamming build. Simple rule of thumb is, if you like using an SMG to finish off players, the Blue Silenced is better. If you like pressuring opponent's builds, the P90s is better. In the end, they're pretty similar and it's just up to your preference. For the fourth slot, we recommend a utility item. Now, you do have some choice in what to choose here. Between slurp juices, big pots, med kits, glider redeploy, rift to etc. There are a lot of viable items you can use and it's going to mostly end up depending on what you manage to find. Here's what we recommend. Having a rift is almost like having a get out of jail free card. <laughs> you can use them to escape a ton of bad situations. They are especially useful in arena where you need easy methods of rotation for the late game circles. But since they are rare and hard to come by, you usually end up running whatever utility you can find in this slot. It's hard to rank which are the best, but we would generally say slurps and big pots are usually the best to carry, unless you're playing arena where rifts and redeploy can be much more useful. As for the last slot, you're going to usually find it taken up by minis. They fill up shield, are easily usable in fights because of their short cast time. They're also super easy to find out it's likely what you'll have a lot of. A small variation of this loadout is the aggressive version, where you would replace the utility item with a more specialized or throwable weapon. The best weapon to run here would be between the Heavy Sniper and the RPG. They're both extremely strong weapons in their own ways. 
The Heavy Sniper allows you to get easy picks at a distance, as well as wall replace opponents in an instant, while the RPG is better for build fights and in-game arena matches. If you can't find an RPG or Heavy Sniper, you can run a grenade launcher, stink bombs, boogie bombs, clingers, or dynamite until you find one of those two. All the throwable items work pretty great, and if you can find more than one stack, you can consider using them. If you like sniping, you can choose to run a Boombo, Hunting Rifle, or Silent Sniper here as well. Playing the more aggressive version of this kit will help you get more kills, but sometimes it's better to run the safer option. This is probably the strongest loadout in terms of raw power at the moment, with the biggest cheese potential out of all of them. It involves shooting the RPG at a structure your opponents are hiding in, and then comboing with the heavy snipe on the wall right before the rocket hits it. If you can catch your opponent not holding turbo build, it's a free rocket's worth of damage on your foes. There's a higher risk running this kit, but if you mess up the combo, the reload time is super long, so smart enemies will take advantage of this by pressuring you. Having an RPG to use in combat, as well as a heavy sniper for long range picks and wall replaces makes this kit one of the outright most deadly in the game right now. Just take a look at Tifu utilizing this technique a couple days ago. Even though his teammate XQC was dead, he landed three hits with his RPG on them with it. He even goes in later with his heavy sniper for a quick wall replace into edit and pump shot. Tifu lands it, but they still have health somehow. Just imagine that he had a teammate in this scenario. They would have wiped this duel out with ease using this technique. One quick tip to point out is how Tifu aims his rocket. He shoots it at the corner but one by one in order to confuse his opponents as to which wall he will heavy snipe. It's actually very clever and it helps him pull off the move. As for outside of the RPG and Heavy Sniper, you might end up having to spray the Scar as a close range finisher after shotgun shots, so a regular Scar is better here with its superior bloom and damage. This loadout is best suited for duels and squads, where a player who is comfortable using only a couple of weapons can hold the utility for the others. But it can also definitely work for solos as well, especially in Arena, where a lot of successful gameplay is based on keeping a good position and surviving rotations. With this kit, you only have a pump and an assault rifle to kill your enemies with. The assault rifle is versatile enough at any range, and the pump is for those close range chunks of damage. You forfeit at least one weapon with this kit, instead of choosing on an item that will help you rotate, as well as two healing items. This loadout lets you play positioning and maintain health between rotates more effectively than any other. One tip we can give you if you want to use this loadout is to practice swapping to your assault rifle after you shoot your pump. Don't be like many of us that are so used to running the submachine gun that you accidentally swapped your rip to go. So far, Season 8 has brought us quite a few new weapons. So let's discuss whether or not they're good and when exactly you would want to use them. We're including the infantry rifle right here because when it is redesigned to be hit scan, along with its new epic and legendary variant, its viability went up massively. The biggest benefit of the infantry rifle is its low damage fall off. It sort of acts as a hit scan assault rifle sniper hybrid. If you have good aim, you can peg people far away for more than you could with a normal assault rifle. You can replace either a non-scar assault rifle or a sniper rifle with an infantry rifle in any of these loadouts and be fine, with the exception of a heavy sniper which is too unique and powerful in its own way. The flint knock is somewhat good, its biggest strength that separates it from other weapons is its knockback effect on the user. This means you can use it to prevent fall damage, gain height in a build fight, or launch yourself towards an opponent. It also does pretty decent damage at round 90, making it definitely combat worthy. If you manage to land a headshot with it, you basically win the fight, considering how much damage it does. We recommend replacing an SMG with it if you feel like having some more mobility while you play, and using it as a follow-up to a pump shot. If you have a gold pump and a green flint knock, you can actually do 200 damage with two quick body shots, so those two make a perfect pair. The Boombo is probably one of the most unique weapons to come out in a while. The weapon can technically be used at any range, but you're gonna really hinder your movement if you attempt to use it in a close range fight versus a player who is building. Since the splash damage alone is 100 and it spawns on the ground, it's an exceptionally strong early game weapon to land on you if you manage to see one. The downside, however, is that the Boombo has one shot potential only to 130 HP, whereas the Heavy Sniper has one shot potential for both 150 HP and 200 HP. The Heavy Sniper being able to do one shot builds as well just makes it a lot more effective. So for a sniper, there's nothing wrong with using the Boombo. It's not bad by any means, but the Heavy is just too powerful to ignore once players get you. In conclusion, the best loadouts in Season 8 are also what has been tried and true for a few seasons now. 
It really depends on your playstyle along with the game mode you're in to decide which loadout should be used. So try to experiment and find which one works best for you. Hey guys, once again, this is Keith Allen Henson. Hey, thanks so much for watching. And if you want to connect with me, I would love to hear from you on my Instagram. Hey, stay tuned for more videos coming up.